Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we're going to be taking a look at a new tool for overlaying OSD over your FPV goggle footage. So this tool was primarily developed for the Walksnail system but has since had other systems added to it such as DJI with WTF firmware. Now this tool was developed by Sneaky, the guy who makes the really cool fonts for those HD systems. Basically it's a fresher tool, a much faster tool and just really nice to use. So I wanted to go over that tool with you guys, show you how to download it, install it, and give you a brief overview. Right, so first off, where do we get it from? Well, the easiest way to find it is just to type in sneaky FPV into Google and go to sneaky FPV site, which looks like this. I'll put a link in the video description so it's easier for you guys. But you see, if you scroll down, there's this new HD OSD fonts for FBV tool. So to get it, we head over to Shannon's coffee site. There's two versions. There's a free trial version, so you can try it out yourself, or there is a paid version. Now, I know there are already tools available. I've used Alex's Walksnell tool, and I used the one before that. The problem is they didn't all do exactly what I wanted. And to be honest, they've stopped being developed now as well. This new tool is currently actively developed and actually he's done a lot of work in a very short time. It's, it's come on quite rapidly. It does more than those other tools. And there's features that were in the original tool that weren't in Alex's tool. And this basically just has everything and a bit more control over it. But if you're unsure, just download the trial. For me, I'm gonna be buying this one straight away now. So let's click on that, add it to the cart. I'm gonna fill all this stuff in and come back to you. Okay, so I've just gone through the buying process. For any of you guys in the UK, the 15 Australian dollars works out to about £7.50. So this tool is not a lot of money. It's, you know, it's less than $10 US, I'd guess. Literally the price of maybe two coffees, you get this amazing tool. You're also giving thanks back to Sneaky, who's done so much work on all these fonts that you can basically get for free. This is a nice way to give back to him and get something of real value. Once you've gone through the purchase, there's a download link. There's also a link to a Facebook group, which you can get help. So let's download the tool and we'll come back once this is downloaded. OK, so we've downloaded the tool. Let's just have a look in this file. OK, so there's no install file, so all we need to do is basically extract this to somewhere to actually use it. Let me just stick it in my program files. And let's create a new folder. So I'm literally just going to copy all this and dump it in there. And next, I'm just going to add a desktop shortcut so it's easier to use. So what we're going to do is take this sneaky FPV OSD overlay tool. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to choose copy. And then over here, I'm just going to do paste shortcut. Um, press F2 to edit the name and just get rid of all that. And get rid of. There we go. So let's open up the tool. If you get a warning box like this pop up, don't worry, just click run. It will, it's all fine. It's all been checked, validated, everything like that. And we can trust Sneaky FPV. Now, one thing that you'll probably see if this is your first time using this is this uh, FFmpeg is not installed and you do need it for the tool. So all you need to do is click yes and it will basically get the tool for you. So when you click yes, basically this box will pop up where it's transferring the FFmpeg stuff to the sneaky install folder. Now, if you don't get this box with this blue bar and it's just like a black window that then disappears very quickly, there's an issue with permissions on your folder. Basically, this is unable to actually store the FFmpeg stuff. So if you remember, I installed to sneaky fpvh yeah you know, the tools folder if you right click on there and go to properties you can see security um this is probably not the right way to do it but it does get it working but you just click on edit um so i just enabled everything on application packages uh creator owner 
system admin and users and trusted installers. I just okayed that. Once I did that, then this started working. Once this is finished getting all the way to here, FFmpeg will be installed and we'll carry on with the video. Okay, so FFmpeg has now installed. So when I click this, the OSD tool uh, will actually open. As you can see, it's a pretty simple layout, which is fantastic, makes it easy to work with. One thing I'd recommend turning on if it's not enabled by default is check updates on launch. At the moment, this tool has been getting new versions quite frequently, and it's always new features at the moment too, which is fantastic. Um, this latest update, I believe, added the WTF OS support and the O3 on Goggles V2 support. Shannon's just been working on this and it's paid off. It's a really good tool. Right, so how to use this? Let's just click browse. This is some videos I literally just pulled off my goggles from yesterday. So let's go for this video here. And you can see it loads everything straight away. So it knows the video file. It's picked up the OSD file from the uh, same folder. It knows I'm using iNav. It's selected a font and it's already added all the um, subtitles and everything. First thing that we can change if we want is the font and we get a nice preview. So let's pick Europa. We can actually change where the preview is by adjusting our slider here. You have a font that you use all the time. You can click the little heart icon and that favorites it. So every time you load up that particular firmware, that will then be the, the selected font. Now, if like me, you use a custom font or you use a font that's not in the list, you can add it. So we click this little gear icon here and then we get this other tool here. This is just like the font database. So you can see all our fonts are here. We can uh, enable or disable them as favorites. Uh, it gives you the firmware, everything. So if we want to add a new font, we just need to click on add image. And then we find our font, which I've just stuck in user font. Can we add them all at once? Yes, nice. So I've just added those four fonts. And what we can do is give them more meaningful names. So I'm just going to do this pretty quickly. Oh, it's up, sorry. Names up here. So let's save that. Save that. Um, and then I'm just going to click set them as favorites as well. So there we go, that's added now to our database. So we don't even need to restart this tool, it's already done it. And because it's favorited, it's selected it for us. So you can see now it's using my font. As you can see, not much has changed because I did base it on the Europa font. All that I've done is added my logo. The next thing we can change is the subtitles. You can just not show them at all, or if you show them, you can choose what you wanna show as you can see, I've got the full debug subtitles here, but we don't need all this. You can get, get rid of bits that you don't want. Um, and once you've chosen what you want, you can actually move where you want to put it as well, which is great. You can change the size of the font. So there you go. That's, that's a very quick overview of what you can do with the subtitles. Now, another thing that we can do, which is really cool, is we can mask out individual parts of the OSD we don't want. And to do that, we find the frame where we want this to begin. So let's go to the first frame where we actually see the OSD elements. So we're going to click mask start. Then we'll go to the last frame, click mask end. And now we choose what we want to get rid of. So let's say we're hiding that element for some reason. And then go save mask. And that's it. That is now hidden. And if you see, when I go back to the arming screen, the mask disappears. So it's really nice. We can just get rid of particular things for particular parts of the video, which is fantastic. Uh, if we want to get rid of it, we can just choose delete mask. And there we go, it's gone. So this is now going to output the whole OSD. If we had masks, it would emit those elements for the period that the mask lasts. Now, the final step is the processing and outputs. 
Now the default is overlay onto video. So basically it will produce a new video with a video underneath and the OSD just on that video. The other option is a transparent overlay, which is something I absolutely adore. This is something that was sort of in the original tool, but that output as like a array of ping files. This one actually produces a video which is transparent that you can overlay on the top. So video editing, you would have your original flight video and then you'd put a video with just the OSD over the top. It allows you to do, you know, blending in and out, masking on the fly, all that sort of good stuff. So this is a fantastic option. I'm really glad it was added. But anyway, let's do a basic overlay on video. Now we can choose our output directory. So I'm just gonna put it in the same folder it was in already. And the really cool thing is we can detect what graphics system we're using. So if I click detect and apply, it has found that I've got an NVIDIA GPU. So it's already chosen the correct setting for my NVIDIA GPU. That's all we need to do. You can change the bitrate, but it actually detects the bitrate of the original video and just keeps that the same. The last thing is, um, if you want to see what's going on, you can check out this um, command here to see what be is being output to FFmpeg, but you don't really need it. Once you've done the detect and apply, chosen your output path, that's it. All we need to do is click process current video. So there we go, it begins. So it, it does uh, two sweeps of the video. And as you see, this first one's really quick. The next one is what takes the time, which is generating the video. But as you can see, it's pretty fast. It's, it's a lot faster than the tools that I've used previously. All right, so this was a five minute video and the process has already finished. It's done it in one minute, four seconds. When it finishes, you get this little box come up Basically what this will do is if you click yes, it will open up a folder with the video already selected and ready to look at. So um, if you choose no, it just continues as it was. So if I click on this, we now have our video footage with our OSD. Simple, it's such a nice tool. So there we have it. Once you've done with that, then you just click on browse choose the next video and add it in. That's how you use this tool. So I hope you guys found this video useful. It is a wonderful tool. And basically I will be using this for all my videos from now on. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe and bell icon. That way it will help get this video out to more people so they can learn about this tool too. And also when I produce new videos, it will alert you and maybe it's something else you're interested in. Thank you very much for watching guys. Sorry I've not been about a lot. I do have a lot going on at the moment and I, I am trying to make more videos. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much. I do appreciate everyone that's been sticking with me. Um, yeah, I'm so sorry. But thank you. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.